this is a video for beginners in ggplot. I'm not gonna get too fancy. I'm gonna walk you through the basics. At the end of it, you're gonna understand how to create graphics using what we call the grammar of graphics. Uh, it's a lovely way to create data visualization. Um, I'm gonna teach you how to do these scatter plots, bar plots, bar codes. I'm not gonna get into the detailed code of some of these more sophisticated graphics, but you're gonna learn the principles. And then if you want to, I'm gonna, at the end of the video, tell you how you can access this page that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, you'll be able to see the code that I use to create these things, and I have these annotations that'll walk you through the details of the code so you can do this in your own time. Remember that all of the examples that I do, I always use data sets that you have access to on your computer so you can replicate everything that I'm doing at home. Having said all of that, let's jump right in. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Before we look at the code, I want you to understand the output so that as we look at the code, it makes sense to you that we're doing this in order to get that, if that makes sense, right? So here's the plot that we're creating. We've got penguins that live on some island um, and there's three types of penguins and they are designated with three different colors on this particular plot. On the y-axis, we've got body mass, x-axis, we've got flipper length. Okay, so each of these dots represents a penguin and the Dot will tell you what its flipper length is, what its body mass is, and by its color, it'll tell you what species it is. And then we can also visually see here that there's a nice seemingly linear relationship between body mass and flipper length. Okay, now let's take a look at the code that we used to get there. First things first, library, Palmer Penguin, that will get you access to the data that we're looking at. Okay, so install packages, Palmer Penguin, library, boom shakalaka, you've got it. Now, before we look at the detail of the code, I want you to understand that there are three major things we have to define, and if you do that, you've got a plot. First of all, you have to define the data, and I'll just go through this, you have to define the data. The second thing you have to define is the mapping of aesthetics. In other words, var various variables get mapped out against various aesthetics. Your X and your Y coordinates are aesthetics. Color is a coordinate. You could have shape, for example, uh, fill. There's a number of aesthetics that uh, it will use your data to kind of define. And then finally, you have to define the geometry. What kind of plot is going to be produced here? Everything else after that is window dressing, but those three things are super important for you to define. And if you get used to using them, you get used to creating layers. You could do, you can have multiple geometries layered one on top of the next when you get used to how to use this. So it's really is a lovely way of doing coding. And um, once you get used to it, you'll absolutely love it. Let's go into the details that's in the code next. Right, so as you can imagine, we use the function ggplot. We're talking about ggplot. The first argument is data equals penguins. Okay, that's what the data set is called that we're calling. Now, before we carry on, I want you to note that I've said data equals penguins. You don't actually have to put the word data in there. You could just write penguins. ggplot knows that the first argument is asking for data. And that's very useful, especially in the context of the tidyverse, where all of these packages like dplyr all work together. Um, and let me show you what I mean in this next, I'm, I'm gonna come back to this scatter plot, but I just wanna show you here, I've said penguins, pipe operator, and I'm piping this data in to ggplot. So ggplot knows that it's the first, arg you know, when you pipe data object from one line into the next, it knows that that should be used as the first argument. The nice thing about this is I could manipulate this on the way. So I could say penguins, filter by, select, et cetera, et cetera, and then pipe that into ggplot and all of those parameters would be included uh, just in, in one big chunk of code without the need for creating new data objects. So that's quite useful, but let's go back to our a scatter plot, right? So we've said data equals penguins. Now it's the mapping. This is the mapping, right? We're saying the x-axis must be mapped against flipper length, right? And you saw that down here, flipper length, x-axis, happy days. Y-axis, body mass. Uh, color is species. Again, all of this makes perfect sense if you think about the plot that we created. So it's not complicated. This is what we call aesthetic mapping. And then finally, geometry. Here we go, geom point. This could, there's multiple other geometries and I'm not gonna get into that right now, but you define the geometry there. At this point, it would just create a plot that looks pretty much like what we've got down there, but we've added a little bit more here. So we've said labs, which is, this is not, you don't need this, but it's a nice optional extra. Oh, before we carry on, geom point, okay, that's telling it that geometry it must use is a point. It's gonna create a scatter plot. If, you know, we could use any other geometry we're gonna see with box plots and bar, bar plots just now that you use different geometries there. But size is equal to three. That just means that the size of the dots is three. You could make it four, five, any number you wanted. Alpha is equal to 0.5. That's the transparency of 
uh, the particular dot, right? So I've made it, 0.5 is half transparent, just so that it, where they overlap with each other, you can sort of see that. Right, then the next function, labs, which means labels, title equals flipper length versus body mass, x equals flipper length in millimeters. So you can see that what I've put here as the x label appears on the plot as the x label, right? Same with y, body mass in grams. Then theme minimal, that basically is this nice clean white background that it's got over here. There are lots of interesting themes that you can use, but theme minimal is nice and clean and it gives a nice professional look about it. So I like theme minimal, okay? And that produces the plot that you see down there. Right, next I'm gonna just walk you through box plots and bar plots. I'm not gonna get into the details of the lollipops and the ridges. There are lots of other plots you can create, but what I'm wanting to get today is you used to this idea of define the data, uh, define the aesthetics or the mapping of aesthetics and defining the geometry. If you get that right, you're well on your way Boom shakalaka, you're gonna cook with gas. Okay, so here we've got some box plots. Uh, just looking at it again, we've mapped color against species. Uh, the X axis is species, the Y axis is bill length. Let's have a look at the code. And I know this is a little bit repetitive, but it'll just help you get used to it. Here we've got penguins piping it into ggplot, so we don't need to define the data. Aesthetics, right? So this is the mapping of aesthetics. X equals species, that's the X axis. Y equals bill length y-axis and fill equals color. Notice I've used the word fill here and not the word color. The reason is that these are sort of big boxes or rectangles. If I said color, it would think that I meant the outline of that rectangle, right? So if I said uh, color equals species, it would basically use these colors just to do the outline and not the inside, right? So fill equals species is important. And then I define the geometry, geom box plot, which is the kind of plot that we've done here. Alpha equal 0.5 to make it a bit transparent, just gives it a slightly softer look, which I kind of like. Um, notice that this is also important. When we're working in the tidyverse, we use the pipe operator to pipe one object into the next line of code. As soon as we're inside ggplot, we're not using pipe operators anymore, but a plus sign because we're adding something on, right? So we do the mapping of the aesthetics, then we're adding on the geometry, and then we're adding on the labels, and then we're adding on the theme, right? So this is, it's almost like R kind of sees this as one continuous line of code. So pretty easy. In fact, let's just jump straight into bar plot. The exact same thing applies here, right? Define the data penguin, define the mapping of aesthetics, X equals species, so you know, there they are. Um, y equals body mass in grams. Now, what's interesting here is what is it gonna do with the body mass in grams? Is it gonna count the number of observations? Is it gonna give a total? What is it supposed to do with that variable when it maps it against the Y axis? Well, we're gonna have a look at that in just one second. Again, fill equals species. In other words, the color that you put in inside the boxes will be mapped out against the whatever species you're dealing with. Right, here's where things are interesting. Geom bar, that is, so geom bar here is the geometry that we're gonna use, right? Um, and it's been told to summarize the dot instead of counting it, right? So we've got stat equals summary. So the statistics it must use is summary and it must use the mean function, which is average um, to define what, so it's basically gonna give us the average body mass for each of these particular uh, species, okay? Alpha is 0.5, so make it transparent, gives it a softer look. Labels, theme, we've talked about that, boom shakalaka. Now for the lollipop plot and the ridge plot, I'm not gonna go into the code because it's a little bit more complicated, but the same principles apply. Um, I've, and I've got specific videos that go into these particular plots if you're interested. But it's also true that you can get access to this particular page and you can copy this data, stick it into, into RStudio and run it yourself. And you can also have a look at all of the annotations that explain exactly what's happening with each line of code. So um, you might find that useful. If you wanna get access to this particular page, click on the link that's on the screen at the moment. That'll take you to Learn More 365 and you'll be able to get a free access to this. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. Don't ever change, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Boom shakalaka.